So the, the, the main group of our uh, main job of our group is uh, is on developing the solution libraries, and uh, which uh, which is called the XOver. Uh, uh, we want to, especially in this conference, we want to uh, to show some uh, preliminary results, and we we have the plugins package XOver for form, and uh, the uh, motivation is that we want to um, to 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 have the open form software can be efficiently run on GPUs and clusters, especially clusters with GPUs. Actually, that's the main motivation. And uh, we, as a solution library, and uh, we, we focus on uh, intuitive, intuitive solution methods, especially for the Krillov subsystem subsist methods and the, and the preconditioners, actually. And uh, we focus on the implementation and the optimizations on the, uh, on the GPUs, many core architectures. Actually, uh, so far we, we try to achieve the, some achievements uh, which, uh, which has been uh, listed here and I uh, will briefly explain one by one. And first of all, we, we have, uh, if you want to run your code very efficiently on GPU, so you have to actually somebody redesign and, uh, your algorithm, like the first uh, uh, first talk, and the, you, also you have to think about that. How what, what's the difference between the uh, in, in in the area of the architectures from the CPUs and the GPUs? You have to make full use of architecture features, and then you can you can typically and correspondingly uh, design a better implementation and optimizations. Second one, that's because an open form is uh, is is executed uh, in, in clusters, in distributed memory clusters. Actually, it means that our solution library and solution method must also support these architectures. So we have to take care about the, the communication, uh, and the information, and the, also the between the different computing nodes, and how carefully and in a, in a good manner and very efficiently. So, and because we have different the kind of architectures of GPUs, for example, for the AMD-like, and uh, which is uh, uh, from the from different uh, factory, and uh, of course we have the uh, NVIDIA uh, GPUs, and uh, they are they are slightly different. I have to say, from the imp uh, using point of view, but from the implementation point of view, actually. It's different uh, programming models. You have uh, CUDA and the HAPE, a different language, but they are close to each other. Actually, this is overview of our uh, solution library XOVER, and uh, like the other, all the other uh, libraries, actually, uh, we always always use this uh, level structure and level layered architecture and the layered models. And uh, for example, at the topest level, you have this programming interfaces. Actually, uh, you have to determine which solution method preconditioning you want to use, and in, in your specific uh, domain. <coughs> uh, with <coughs> and uh, actually, this is a level actually which is open to the users. And from below that that layer, everything is hidden from uh, in the background, and uh, that's. Uh, main job of our, uh, our engineers and uh, who develop this library. For example, we have this uh, Krilov subspace method, uh, well, the CG and the GCR, GMIS, and Actra and the IDRS, and uh, algebraic multigrade, actually, there are many uh, variants and of Krilov subspace method. And uh, of course, that, uh, if you're using this iterative solution method, the preconditioning is very important uh, for the for the efficiency and the robustness of uh, the whole solution scheme. So uh, you have to develop and use and, and determine which preconditioning you have to use. Actually, in this uh, library, we, we supply some well-known and quite often used as brick uh, preconditioning, for example, the incomplete uh, factorizations, factorizations and the as brick uh, multigrade and sparse approximate inverse and, and so on. Actually, this is a solution method and the, from the viewpoint of the implementation, actually, uh, for the solution method and the preconditioning, if you look in, uh, zoom in, you can find that there are subsets of uh, uh, basic common uh, operators, uh, algebraic uh, operations, such as, uh, for example, for the, uh, we call it the, the layer of the sparse, uh, sparse plus, sparse plus. 
because as, uh, for example, for the Krilov subspin method, you have to take care of this uh, sparse matrix vector multiplication and, 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 and also some algebraic multigrade and the sparse uh, matrix matrix multiplications are very important uh, key operations in this solution method. And also, that's uh, the sparse plus, and we have the different uh, backends. We use different programming models and to, to, to make our library uh, properly uh, doable in different architectures, in different computers, GPUs. That's the main architecture. And here, for the support of, uh, because we want to support the uh, open form, actually, as uh, open form, as I mentioned, I, Everybody knows that it's, it's, it's run uh, on the distributed memory clusters, and it means that you have to take care of the communications. Another very famous library is the PIS. Actually, they also support this, uh, this kind of calculations. But when you are using PIS, you, you have to take care of that. You, you have to feed the matrix uh, into PIS with the global index. Global index. But this it's not available in the, in the open form. Actually. It's not available in the finite volume discretizations because in finite volume discretizations, we only have this local index number. We don't have to take, uh, consider the global one. But if you want to use PES, you have to supply the global one, global index, and then you can use PES. Actually, uh, the global index is very helpful and useful to, to determine the communication information. But uh, actually, the users and you and we have to to, to supply the global indices. So this is not very friendly. And we think about that actually in the open form, in the finite volume discretizations, all the arguments are directly available in the finite volume in open form. That's all we need to, to have this information communications implemented efficiently. Actually, we directly pick them up from the open form, from finite volume discretization, and then collect them and give it to X over, that's all. And then we can solve it on the distributed memory clusters. That's the difference, actually. Uh, that's a very uh, example of the, how to use this library. And uh, it's quite simple. And you have this matrix. And then the user has a supply in the CSR format and give it to X over. You determine the solution method, for example, Jimmy is here, and the preconditioning, LOT, and then just do it and solve it and wait for the final results. And you don't, as a user, doesn't have to take care about, think about uh, which platform is uh, executed, is GPUs or CPUs, distributed memory and the communication information, nothing to be, to be cared because in the background, and libraries, and the XOR libraries, and it implements uh, all the stuffs very efficiently in the background. Actually, in open form, actually we, we use open form, and uh, we uh, we have to uh, normally we have to <coughs> change the FA solution file. And uh, here, if you want to use X over in this file, FA solution file, you just switch from the built-in solvers to the X over. So that's all, and you that's very easy to use that, and you you just. Uh, to select the, the, the determines which preconditioning, which you know, solution method we want to use. And then at, in the background, the solution procedure will be executed in the GPUs. In the GPUs. Okay. So from the implementation point, actually, is a sparse. Uh, for the Krill of subspace method, actually, it's, uh, it's not very challenging because all the methods rely on a uh, reduced subset of uh, operations with them, SPMV, it was very key operations. And there are a lot of optimizations of this operation on GPUs. And here in, in, in our library, and we, we suppose uh, we, we focus on the optimization by different storage formats. And as with each storage format, we have to <coughs> implement correspondingly backend and uh, within some optimizations, especially uh, for this kind of uh, format. But more challenging thing is uh, preconditioning, actually. Uh, it's very crucial for the efficiency of the intuitive solution method. Actually, I list some the, the main preconditioning techniques in the X over. I suppose that you are quite familiar with them. For example, the incomplete LU preconditioning, a post mean inverse, algebraic multigrade, I see. But here, I would like to say that all the preconditioning solution methods are 
proposed on CPU architectures originally. But now, nowadays, we want to move from CPU to GPUs. That's very challenging. Because if you can try to, solve, uh, to write your own code, for example, the incomplete uh, IOU uh, factorizations from, on GPUs, and you find that, wow, it's very slowly. It's very slow. It's even slower than CPU ones. The reason that, the reason that all the solution is preconditioning, for example, the incomplete factorization precondition is at the beginning of the point, it's, it's, uh, it's not a parallel one. It's not a parallel algorithm. It's a serial one. It's a serial one. And in CPUs, it's OK. But in GPUs, it's architecture is diff totally different. In GPUs, we have many, many cores, many threads. Actually, this architecture favors the algorithm with a very high parallelization. If it's a serial one, it's very slow executable in GPUs. So we need to re uh, rebuild and reformulate the, the, this is very standard, very basic uh, algorithm. For example, the LU, uh, incomplete LU factorization. Actually, that's the starting point of the story. Actually, uh, mathematically, uh, starting point is this. Uh, all the elements in the factors we want to solve is factorize. And uh, actually, we, uh, this elements satisfy this constraint. If you see that there are ice constraints and ice elements we want to solve is, it, it's a, typically is a nonlinear problem. If a nonlinear problem and we can solve it with some nonlinear intuitions, for example, fixed point intuitions. Fixed point. And here, that's nothing wrong, nothing to do with the factorizations. It's just about the solution procedure. Actually, if uh, for the operator G and the equation operator G contains all the elements of this uh, elements of these factors and uh, it's nonlinear operator and we form solve it, we have uh, many algorithms uh, in this topic. For example, we use the fixed point intuitions and in, uh, into, uh, loop this uh, intuition and you can, finally you can find this uh, approximate inverse. A uh, 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 approximate solution. Actually, if you can, that's the fundamental mathematical uh, basis of this uh, uh, fine grained parallel. Because uh, if you see that uh, for the algorithm, and uh, originally it's a serial one, it's a for loop, but it's a, you have to do it one loop by another one by one. But here you can see it's totally parallel. And as the line, second line, you see that a sweep. A sweep from one, two, three, and, and, and two conversions. It's a sweep corresponding to the corresponds to the fixed point intuitions. And within this uh, sweep, each element of the factors can be computed in parallel. In parallel. So in this way, we, we have uh, we achieve very high parallelization and uh, it's typical, typically suitable to be executed in GPUs. If you compare the standard uh, algorithm and the fine grid, you find that, OK, what, for the traditional IOU factorization, and this is typically is a serial one, and from the implementation point, you can see that we artificially, we artificially parallelize this loop. Of course, if you artificially parallelize this loop, the accuracy is loose. However, we have this sweep. We, we, we sweep this, uh, this parallelization procedure and step by step. Finally, uh, hopefully, and with five or of, of six uh, sweeps, we can achieve, the, we can recover the accuracy. That's a, that's a very interesting point from the utilization. Actually, we have very high parallelization, and we can get a very good accuracy. So that's a fine grade parallel LU, and you can move to with, uh, we know that in the Factorization, you can have this fixed pattern and factorize, factorize that. And you can also have this uh, factorization and with, uh, we filter out the elements of the factors by the magnitudes of the elements. So that's what we call the drop tolerance threshold and the parallel LT, actually, with little more few ins and the, uh, the magnitudes of few ins are very relatively large. So we think that we should keep. Okay, that's uh, 
still that we, we have these factors and we have this factorization, we have this L and the U factors, uh, still we, we apply the preconditioning, we have to solve the linear system with the sparse uh, triangular solvers. And traditionally on the, on the CPUs, you can have this level schedule and, um, and, blah, and, and other methods on CPUs, but it's still the parallelization is very low actually. In, on GPUs, you have to much, much increase it. So here, we use the Jacobi intuition to solve the sparse triangular systems. Why? Because first of all, it's very simple. The Jacobi intuition is very simple. It's, high, it's, it's of high level parallelizations. If you look at this formulation, it's just the SPMV, sparse matrix multi, uh, multiplied by the vector. And more important, actually, for most of our application in open form, we find out that for the, the, the condition number of the, the sparse triangular Triangulars actually uh, reasonable good, reasonable good. Actually, you can solve it by the Jacobi intuitions very efficiently within five or uh, ten Jacobi intuitions. That's quite enough. If you look at this comparison between the Jacobi and the Jimris, they are quite close to each other. But keep in mind that Jacobi is much cheaper than Jimris. Actually, so that's why we we, we want to solve it with the Jacobi intuitions to 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 for the triangular solvers. So. Uh, here, uh, we, I would like to show some uh, experimental results uh, by the fine grained par uh, parallel incomplete, incomplete uh, factorization, preconditioning, and some uh, 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 sparse uh, Jacobi uh, iterative solution method as a sparse triangular solver. And we have two different kinds of uh, architectures in Vita GPUs and uh, uh, high gong uh, uh, DCUs, which is from Beijing, actually it's, uh, it's the Chinese GPUs and the AMD like. So we have a uh, different programming models of all the solution methods and implementations. So first we have to, we will compare with uh, this factorization with uh, another very famous uh, library in the Magma. And Magma also uh, utilizes this uh, fine grid uh, parallelization. Uh, fine grain uh, incomplete uh, factorization methods, and we see that on the on on the selected uh, sparse matrix from the sub sparse collection, and we have uh, we achieved some reasonable good uh, speed up compared to the MicMAS implementation. Actually, this is on Nvidia GPUs, and on Nvidia GPUs and the sub sparse from the Nvidia company actually is very is also very powerful. And uh, however, but, uh, in CU sparse, it only sp uh, supports uh, the, the LU uh, factorization results uh, uh, fill ins. We call it the LU zero. And uh, so we compare with X over the fine grained uh, the parallel uh, factorizations and with drop tolerance, the threshold variant. And we solve the same collection of the matrices. You can see in this table, we we collect, uh, we compare the uh, build, uh, setup time and the solution time of the triangular solve and the total time. I, I can you, you can see that. First of all, uh, compare with the uh, uh, LU zero preconditioning and the LUT can much reduce the intuition number, intuition number. So we can have a faster convergence. And second, if you see that the preconditioning setup of the LUT is, uh, is higher, is a little higher than the LUT zero, that's quite normal because we have more complex uh, algorithms than, than the no-fill-in algorithm. But the application application time is much smaller because that we use this Jacobi intuition method for the sparse triangular solver. That's very efficient in, in GPUs. In CU sparse, it uses uh, traditional sparse solvers. That's not very, not, not very efficient in GPUs. And uh, we have this uh, plugins both X over for form, and we, we try to use it uh, in the in open form and to do some uh, experimental study and for the for different benchmarks. Actually, we have two comparison. This is on the DCUs and the uh, Suguang DCUs. Actually, uh, we, we we run it with a, it's a computing node with one uh, thirty two core CPUs and. Uh, and four DCUs, four GPUs. Actually, we saw we want to make full use of all the computing power sources. And for example, OpenFORM actually we use this baseline line, and the OpenFORM uses standard and built-in solvers on on CPUs and with MPI. 
you see that compare with the with the, the CPU version actually we can make we can highly speed up the, the solution time if you move open form from CPUs to GPUs actually. That's the first result. And second one, on the DCUs with the programming, uh, HAPE programming uh, model, and uh, another library is uh, the Rocklotion. Rocklotion is another library, and which is, we can also be used in this uh, AMD-like GPUs. Actually, compared with that library, we still have a, a reasonable good uh, uh, speed up, about uh, three times faster than the Rocklotion. So that's uh, speed up of the end to solution time. And the last thing is that because that if you if you go to the supercomputer centers you have to rent for the computing resources and if you consider about the price for, for the to, to renting the CPU and the GPUs and you also take into account of this uh, speed up of your time to end to solution time finally you can reduce your re, uh, renting fees by approximately 60%. Uh, so you have, you can, if you want to simulate all the uh, benchmarks, and you have, you can pay less money in the renting phase. That's the benefit. If we can have uh, on GPUs, we can have a faster simulation, but with, at the same time, we can have uh, less uh, cost. So that's uh, main about our. Uh, work right now and the uh, ongoing work includes as we, for the uh, especially in the open form we would like to develop some the, uh, domain specific uh, domain specific preconditioning such as for the set point system for the coupled uh, velocity and pressure when we have the set point system and we are, uh, in such systems we have the problem dependent very efficient precondition we call it block structure precondition. And second one is uh, the AMG. We know that AMG method, algebraic multiplication method, is very, very efficient for the Laplacian matrix. And we are developing, especially that we want to use this fine grained parallel uh, factorization as a smoothers in the algebraic multiplication multi methods. And we want to accelerate AMG as much as we can. So, thank you very much. That's, uh, that's all about my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you.